made today to be talking about a TIM named Kim McBride, um, who goes by Sarah McBride. And we just are going to explore some of the reasons that um, this person in, in, in being an imposter, basically um, impersonating a woman and insisting on being called a woman is really dangerous. And I just want to, um, one of the things that brought this to our attention is that um, Mr. McBride recently was elected to state senator in a state senator in Delaware, and is being heralded as you know the first transgender senator in Delaware, but also as a woman. And so it's kind of contradictory because either he's transgender, or he's a woman. He's not a woman. He's transgender. He's a man. Um, so <laughs> we're going to look at this video really quickly, um, just to show the progression of Tim from Tim who was um, who described himself as a sissy gay man at one point to now um, calling himself Sarah McBride and insisting that he should be treated as if he's a woman. We all hate triples. Many of the thousands of students who live on campus are crammed three to a room. All that I can promise is that I will try my hardest. What are you doing? My name is Tim McBride. I'm the student body president at American University. Well, today, I have such an exciting book for us to read. It's one of my favorite books. It's called I Am Jazz. So um, I, I'm really interested now that, that, um, now that we have such a powerful woman uh, representing us, women's issues, I wonder if he's going to be tackling uh, domestic abuse or perhaps, uh, you know, uh, women with substance abuse issues or, you know, uh, women and um, uh, having, uh, not having access to, to good um, cervical cancer screening. I wonder which one of these issues he's going to tackle first. As a woman, I, I, I think that he'd, he'd put girls and women front and center. Um, what, so far, what has he been uh, pushing in the Senate, Maria, do you know? Um, I don't know. He just took office a few days ago, so I haven't actually seen him do anything yet. My guess would be he would continue doing what he's been doing all along, which is pushing transgender, gender industry ideology views. Um, I don't know if you know that Mr. McBride came to my school district in February of 2019, along with Lily Eskelson Garcia, who's the head of the NEA, the National Education Association. And together they read the book, I Am Jazz, to two classes of kindergartners. Without parental approval, the school sent home a really disingenuous letter just a few days before the reading um, and were very cloak and, cloak and dagger, very clandestine about what was happening. But I spoke with a parent of one of the kids who was in one of those classes. Remember, this is a kindergarten, two classes of kindergartners. And they read the book, I Am Jazz. And of course, Mr. McBride said that I am a girl in a boy body. And this to is what- kindergartners, To kindergartners. To kindergartners. And I want to also add that this wasn't just like them going into a classroom and reading a book. This was like, there was hoopla about it. Mr. McBride actually worked for the Human Rights Council. So there was, uh, you know, big banners. There were, you know, people were taking pictures. It was a media event where these children were being told that it's possible to be born in the wrong body in kindergarten. And let's take I Am Jazz to its natural conclusion, right? That book that he was reading out, I think it would be very wise for everybody to know uh, what was recently um, you know, circulating online about I Am Jazz. Really horrific, um, horrific glimpse into Jazz's life as I think a teen, you know, a late teenager, so 19 years old, and has their neo vagina being part of a, 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 a reality television show. This is so horrific um it's such a crime against children to be to to have centered this and to be yes. having a whole event around it um and and, and, and in i can uh, you're talking about alex um jazz's mother talks about taking a dilator with lubricant into his bedroom and telling him if you don't dilate i'll dilate for you but with her i'm worried about like her mental well-being and her dilation. The minute she leaves my house, we have a dilation problem. That, that is a concern. We need not have that watchful eye. 
they tend to go back to old patterns. I have woken Jazz out of a dead sleep and taken the dilator and put the lubrication on it and said, here, you take this and you put it in your vagina. If not, I will. But Jazz is bad, even when I'm home once a day. I will be so mad if she goes away to college and that thing seals up. I will wring her neck. Can you imagine? No, I can't this is a mother who is threatening to sexually assault her son on national TV, and nobody seems to be concerned about this. That's sexual assault. Shoving something into a you know a bodily orifice of somebody is sexual assault. Um, I would suggest even telling someone to shove something into their body orifice is really inappropriate for a parent. Um, and, and it really shines light on how um, disgusting this relationship is. And for, mm -hmm. for this book, I Am Jazz, to be promoted to kindergartners is just horrifying to me. I have to admit, I feel, I feel, um, I feel dirty even talking about it. Like I, I feel as somehow as I, as if I'm taking part in this, um, you know, and it just feels so voyeuristic and so, um, the, to, 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 I can't understand how the, the rest of the adults in the room are not saying this is this, hang on a minute. This doesn't feel right with me. And they must feel that. I mean, Maria, what's the recourse if you want your child not to be, you know, uh, taking part in this? Um, unfortunately, the recourse seems to be getting them out of public school mm -hmm. because the public mm -hmm. schools here are 100% in on this. Um, as you can see, this, this elementary school invited Tim McBride, AKA Sarah McBride and, and the, the Human Rights Campaign Foundation in and, and proselytize these kindergartners with this. Let me read what this father said about this event. At, it was Ashlawn Elementary School in Arlington, Virginia. My son was in the I Am Jazz book reading in February. He came home and asked his mom if the doctor could decide that he was a girl someday and that he'd be a girl from then on because the doctor said so. An even bigger deal than that though was when we tried to talk with him about the event he was extremely uncomfortable, like he thought he was in trouble when we were just trying to find out what happened and what he understood about it. He could obviously tell something wasn't right and had no desire to talk about it. Call me crazy, but I don't think anything taught in public schools should cause a rift between parents and their kids. Arlington Public Schools, the Human Rights Campaign, and everyone else involved with this are deliberately using the natural trust young children have in adults perverting it for their own ends and using the classroom as a way around parental authority for subjects they know very well are controversial. That's despicable. This was I, would be, I would be so incensed if my kindergartner came <clears throat> home and told me this had happened in their classroom. I would be incensed. Um, yeah. This is just, you know, the fact that, that I am jazz is even in kindergarten classrooms is bad enough, but to have this man who's, who's impersonating a woman come in and tell the kids that he has a girl brain and a boy body and that he was born in the wrong body and, and just confusing these kids to no end, um, exposing them to this book, which is basically, you know, the more the story of jazz unfolds, it's really clear that jazz's mother is mentally ill at the very least and perhaps a predator at, at worst. I mean, what she's, what she's done to her son is unconscionable. Um, and, mm -hmm. and for all, I mean, kindergartners, that's five years old. These kids are still like, they still believe in the Easter bunny. They still believe in Santa Claus. They, they're still like trying to figure out what the difference is between fantasy and reality. And, and they're having adults who are supposed to be trusted individuals come in and confuse them to no end. And those two, um, two kindergarten teachers who promoted this, who, who arranged this event, um, they were not um, teaching kindergarten the next year. It's unclear. There was a big pushback. There was a lot of outcry about this. The next year, I could not tell. They were both still employees of the school, but I could not tell what they were doing with the school. They were not kindergarten teachers anymore, but I followed up and one of them is now teaching pre-K. <gasps> oh no. Oh. In the school. Wow. Yeah. I just, I can't even, and, and as you said, like this was outside of the, of, 
well, I don't even know if kindergartners have like sexuality education, but this is not something that a parent would have even known to opt out of because it was mm -hmm. so covert. Yeah. Um, and it, was made, it was made part of the NEA National Day of Reading. Mm -hmm. So that was the letter that was sent home is we have this great event for National Day of Reading and it's all about diversity and inclusion and being good global citizens. And they had the word transgender in there once buried in the middle of three long celebratory paragraphs and it came home on a friday so anybody who has kids in school you know you're not going through the backpack on friday afternoon and reading everything that's in there and they know that very well well and even if you did you you might not understand the implications of what's happening that, yeah. that you're having you know basically your child is going to go through um basically an indoctrination at school and this mm -hmm. gender ideology and this was not a yep. one-off event. This happens in hundreds and hundreds of schools around the nation. I, I remember also hearing uh, the story of a, of a father. Um, I'm sure you guys have heard it uh, already, but a father went to pick up their son after hearing one of these classes. Classes. I can't remember if it was jazz or if it was just a general confusing, um, you know, sex ed class where they're teaching that you can be born in the wrong body. But the boy was really frightened that he, his penis was going to, you know, fall off or, or whatever. And, uh, you know, predators are the people who want to confuse children about their bodies and their boundaries. Okay. This is, we know that that's what predators are up to. And why would we ever want to um, enforce that level of confusion and shame and, and, and discomfort in children? I mean, why would we ever want to do that? It's just, it's so unfair. Well, I know there was a case in, um, I believe it was in Rockland, California, where teachers staged a whole like coming out party for a child who, who assumed a, 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 a different gender identity. And I can't remember if it was a boy who decided he was a girl or vice versa, but basically the child um, went out, changed their clothes and came back in. Then the teachers announced a new name and new pronouns. And then the, I believe they read the book, I Am Jazz to the kids. And, and there was a child who went home very, very distressed about this um, and incredibly confused mm -hmm. because um, you know, all their life they've, they've, they've known they're a boy or a girl. And then all of a mm -hmm. sudden they're being told, well, maybe not. Maybe, maybe if you just don't ascribe to these regressive gender stereotypes, there's actually something inherently wrong with you and you should medicalize your body for the rest of your life in order to adhere to these stereotypes. What a horrible message. Well, we've seen that this is considered a growth industry. I'm always using my two fingers when I'm talking about It's because this the language topic. is so muddled and, yeah, and it's ridiculous. just created it. Well, and uh, we came across a, a document by a marketing company. And what this company does is it looks at market trends and it does an in-depth investigation of what the trends are, what the data says, where the future of this particular market might be, whether that's fruit roll-ups or a new video game or whatever. Global Market Industries did a paper on sex reassignment surgery that it's a growth market, that it's a growth market. Invest the your only money. Way, the only way it can be a growth market is if they are marketing it. Because historically, and if you want to say, oh, this is a biological thing and some people are just born this way, which we know is not true. But even if you want to ascribe to that and say some people are just born transgender, there is a certain fixed number of those people. Mm -hmm. There's no way this can be a growth market unless they are driving the growth and people like tim mcbride who come into schools and confuse children are actively driving the growth market for the medicalization and surgical alteration of children yeah and it, it, if you you know look back on that video that we played at the very beginning it's so clear to me that tim mcbride is a man first of all a young man in college who's very politically motivated very astute, obviously um, ha has an interest in politics. Um, and he's also brilliant. a gay man. He's a gay man. And yeah. so in college, he's, you know, he says he's a sissy gay man. And now all of a sudden he says he's a woman. And to me, this is just another example of, you know, homophobia for sure mm -hmm. um, and confusion. Um, and, and the fact is, is that, that Tim McBride um, did not appear to, uh, to, to look anything like a female when he was in college. Um, and so, so it doesn't seem like he was struggling with this at all. 
um, and, and what it looks to me is a political ploy because we know now that um, people who come out as transgender are now like the, they're, they're sort of like the darlings of the, of this um, identity politics movement. Yeah. Um, political um, darlings, you know, media yeah. darlings, entertainment yeah. darlings. Yeah. Yep. And, and I, once you, once you come out, mm -hmm. nobody can say anything. Nobody can criticize you. Nobody can question you. Nobody can do anything but tell you how stinking fabulous you are. Yeah. Yeah, and mm -hmm. anybody who does is called a transphobe and a hater and dismissed. And yet um, here is a man who is actively um, violating women's spaces, um, a, trying to define, redefine what it means to be a woman to include men, um, men. really damaging children by going into classrooms and, and reading this rubbish to them. And, and now he's a politician and being celebrated by the news media as, as you know, brave and all these struggles he's been through. Um, when in fact, in my view, he, he's acting like a predator and he's, he's deceptive. This is not someone who should be in public office. This is not someone who should be around children. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have him Yeah, and it's not as if... <clears throat> It's yeah. not as if he's not aware of the issues. He's not as if he's not aware of, you know, the very reasonable issues that women have put to him over the last couple of years. Um, you know, I remember uh, um, a couple of years ago, um, there were um, there were two or three women who asked him, uh, are you concerned at all about the upward trend that we're seeing of young women who are having their breasts removed? Asked them openly, did not want to respond to it. So, you know, he cannot turn around and say he's ignorant to all, all of these issues that women have. And quite frankly, if he is one, then he should understand the, the, the issues that we have. Right? It doesn't that make perfect sense to you? I'm I'm not um I'm not I'm not from Australia, but I understand the struggles of a woman in Australia, okay? Because we are we have the shared experiences of girlhood and being a woman. So it's entirely ridiculous to rock up when you're a man and start promoting women's rights or women's equality or to be advocating on behalf when it of women. Includes men. I could, when it includes men, yeah. the thing is that they're trying to suggest that they're advocating for women, but what they're doing is advocating yeah. for men. These are men's rights activists who are trying to push mm -hmm. into women's spaces. These are not men who are feminists. We are already occupying that category of people, us as in the women. We're already occupying it. So we cannot be infiltrated right. by anybody else right. and the thing so is that, that he is a man and 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 there are male spaces for him to occupy there are men's bathrooms there are men's showers that's where men yeah. go whether or not you feel comfortable as a man whether or not you um you want to dress um, as a traditional man doesn't really matter. Those are the spaces that we have designated for men. And he has mm -hmm. no right to come into women's spaces. He has no right to put on a dress and some makeup and say that he's a woman. That's just, that's not his right. We don't get, we don't allow people to redefine things at their, at their own um, pleasure, just so that it will make, make their life happier and easier. And in this case, I really feel like it is, um, it's a very well um, planned out, thing that yeah. he's doing here um it, it to mm -hmm. me it looks so you know he's gained he's he's kind of been um been moving up in politics because he's worked for the hrc which is the human rights campaign right. he has oodles of money so he's getting and on it's not a human rights campaign it's no, a it's men's not. Rights it's, campaign. it's 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 yeah. about transgender rights yeah. and then he um you know, he's been making friends with you know politicians in high places and really pushing this agenda and and assuming this um, identity as a marginalized and victimized person, when in fact he's the one doing the bullying. And mm -hmm. confusing of children, I think as well, you know, like let's just, you know, taking aside the fact that he's impersonating a woman and, and uh, getting access to women's spaces, he's also really confusing children. I mean, um, I don't understand why anybody would want to um, go and read that book to a, ch to a child. I mean, uh, please, everybody go and take a look at what a vaginoplasty is and imagine a 17 year old child because that is what's happened to jazz jennings that is what has happened to that poor child um so to go in and read this book it's just 
we know where it ends. Why would you want to do that? If Jazz was right now living their best life, you know, having a fantastic time, but it's quite clearly been a disaster as as people like us have unfortunately predicted. Yeah, yeah so and, this and is not a fact, good story. Yeah, the surgery itself was a disaster. I mean, oh. he whipped Yeah. Open. I mean, it, it's just oh. horrifying. And all this playing out in public TV and people celebrating it. And I just had a thought, imagine if your kindergarten daughter had been at the school mm. that day with Tim McBride and gone to the bathroom and there's Tim McBride in the bathroom with your daughter. I would be so angry. Like we're mm-hmm. teaching these girls that it's okay for men to come into bathrooms um and and we're confusing boys it's just like Mm -hmm. you said alex this is just um for for this book to be promoted the way it is for the human rights campaign to to go into schools and promote this the way they're doing at such a young age Mm -hmm. it's clearly um cultish behavior they're trying to endure kids at a very early age so that then they Mm -hmm. can control them they can tell them you know what's okay and what's not okay and and i'm sure any kid in that classroom who said i don't think you're really a girl i'm sure would have you know (laughs) that wouldn't have gone over okay that wouldn't have gone over okay or if i had been a mother and and i had walked into the bathroom with me and i had screamed at him to get the hell out because this is a woman's room that wouldn't have gone over very well so this is you would have been you would have been asked to leave the school (laughs) yeah for sure and 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 my i'm sure if i had a child there they would have been um tirelessly bullied for for having a a transphobic mom Mm -hmm. Um, this is not about diversity Mm -hmm. it's not about inclusion this is not about being kind and tolerant this is about indoctrinating young children into an ideology that's very harmful and dangerous yeah and and also i think that we we might want to just kind of uh say to everybody who's listening that if if this is happening in your school district or if this is happening uh locally uh you know if you have a public library which is reading uh, uh, i am jazz to young children come to partners for ethical care we want to hear all about these stories we also have lots of resources if you're a teacher or if you are a medical professional or if you are a parent who feels uncomfortable by this or if you're you know perhaps maybe we have children watching us i hope we don't but if you're 12 and 13 and you want to know more you're confused um please you know come ask your mother or father and then come and visit our website uh, because we want to hear these stories we want to document it and we want to provide honest accounts of what is going on i think it's incredibly important not to talk bs to kids mm-hmm. I just it's yeah, so vital I think that that the media has just completely fallen into this so so you know there's article after article about Sarah McBride and her and she and woman um and and again this is just um confusing confusing children confusing the population pushing an ideology that is harmful and dangerous so yes Alex I'm glad you that you remember to remind people to come to our website partners for ethical care um, we want to hear your stories. We want to document this. Um, one of the things that happens in, in these kinds of dangerous um, cultish ideologies is that they push and push and push. And if people aren't documenting what's happening, um, there's no way to push back. So we need to we need to hear from you. And we'll probably be called unkind and not nice mm-hmm. and intolerant for what we've said today. Um, but you know what? It's not nice for a man to push into women's spaces and then tell the women that they're wrong for not liking it. Mm -hmm. Um, It's not tolerant to call women names and, and to, um, and to cancel women and, and try to um, make us silent for saying that, no, we don't agree with this. That's not tolerant at all. Um, It's not kind for Tim McBride to come in to classes with what 60 children and do it behind their parents backs and not even give the parents the the right to say okay this is okay with me or no it's not that's not kind that's not tolerant this is very predatory this is a very intentionally indoctrination um, so we need to kind of take back those words. What does kindness mean? Mm-hmm. What does tolerance mean? What does diversity mean? Because they don't mean what Tim McBride and, and his minions are, are calling them.